What's this? It looks like some spec potential. Let's get into it. Another one. Another list of the comic books defining this generation of collectors. The funny books have been compiled into a list of 10 of record-breaking sales. And we're going to start out the list at number 10 with a glorious Batman key. Gem Mint, why don't you kick them off? But not before they hit the like and slap the subscribe button because they know we got a giveaway on deck. That's right, you know we're here for you every week, and that spec that Tom mentioned is a DC key. We've been saying that the DC books have been undervalued, and we have Detective Comics 411 making number 10 on the list. Debuting in 1971, we have Bruce Wayne's love interest. We have the daughter of Ra's al Ghul. We have Talia al Ghul's first appearance. And considering she has had her live action adaptation specifically in the Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy films, I feel like she was underutilized, which has made this comic book undervalued for far too long. Yeah, I mean, she's Bruce's baby mama, Damian Wayne's mother, and spoiler alert, she just killed Deathstroke in the comics definitely underutilized, which is why we're seeing these record-breaking sales. We have a CGC 9.0 that had the second highest sale at $1,150, which was just shy $50 under the 2018 all-time high. And kind of like that, the 6.0 was just $20 shy of the April high sale of 400 bucks. Now, this book is difficult to secure above an 8.0 because of that black cover, and we have a 9.2 that hit the market. Last selling, in August for fifteen hundred, up six percent. Now selling for fifteen ninety. If you enjoy this video, we produce it every single week for the comic fam. So hit the subscribe button. But if you want to get the data where we source this information from ahead of our video, download the best comic app in existence, Key Collector Comics. Utilize code Tom One Hundred One. You support the show, but you also unlock yourself a free two week subscription of the app. But the majority of the app is free for everyone to use to catalog your comics. Learn learn about funny books, get suggested pricing, and so much more. Next at the list at number nine, we have Amazing Spider-Man issue number 123. And it's kind of a DC key as well. Let me explain. It's the funeral of Gwen Stacy, but more importantly, it's a battle between Spider-Man and Luke Cage. That's what I think the spec is more focused on. Plus, Luke Cage makes a reference to Batman here. Not only is it a reference to Detective Comics, a completely different publisher, it's a reference to The Dark Knight. He says, we ain't all rich playboys like Bruce Wayne on this classic battle cover, which, by the way, we have brought to the mic multiple times, covers that weren't really key renowned, but because of famous meetups, battles between heroes and villains, they have become wanted more now than ever in comic history. We have an 8.0 back in August going for $99, up 20%, now selling for $120. Jem, I think this has to be spec on the Defenders Netflix heroes coming in to the MCU at large. What do you think? 100%. We have Spider-Man in the MCU. We are getting Luke Cage back. We might see them battle one time, and that would make this book go up in value. The 9.2 hitting 270 back in September is up 2%, now selling for 275. A 9.4 came to market. It last sold for $350. Just last week, it's up 14%, now selling for 400. Now we just talked about the funeral of Gwen Stacy. Jem, hit him with number eight. Yeah, this is the Gwen Stacy key to own. Amazing Spider-Man 31, arguably ugly Ditko cover, but the first appearance of Gwen Stacy, first appearance of Harry Osborn and Miles Warren, who later becomes the Jackal. We call that a triple key, and we have a point five that is establishing a record. No prior sales data selling this week for $200. And a 4.0 getting its second highest sale recorded, which was 10% under its June height back in 2021, which was 586, coming in this week with a $530 sale. This is also the first time Dr. Octopus gets named the Master Planner. You know, it's a good thing he was planning and not baiting. We have a CGC 6.0 that sold for $1,040 just last week. It's up 6%, now selling for $1,100. And you got to hit a like button for that joke. At the list, at number seven, we have Clea's first appearance on a cover to talk about. Doctor Strange, 175, debuting in 1968. Yeah, so we're past the spoiler embargo. We did get Clea like we thought, but not really how we thought. We just got her in the post credit scene, but it's enough to make Clea Key spike. Doctor Strange 175, a CGC 5.5, sold for just 80 bucks back in November. It's up 88%, now selling for 150. The 6.5 went for $55 in 2021, up 98%, breaking the $100 marker, landing at 109. 
Then we got a high grade copy, a CGC 9.2, which sold for $384 just last week. It's up now 4% selling for 400. Consider Strange Tales 126. Weeks ago, we reported on Clea's first appearance, a 9.0 breaking records, an increase of 77%, landing at 2,875. With heights being reached on the first appearance, of course, the first cover appearance is going to see an uptick, which we warn you about regularly on this channel. Hit the subscribe button at the list at number six. Jane Foster Thor in 2014 in Thor number one. Yeah, man, some love and thunder spec happening here. Obviously, Jane Foster playing a huge role. And while everyone's talking about Gore the God Butcher, I'm just watching this trailer saying, man, they're not going to play the cancer story and they're not going to play the who is this new Thor story. I found that interesting too, Jem. I mean, clearly Thor recognizes Jane Foster as Thor Jane? in the trailer, which is very different from the comics. It was a slow burn reveal. Actually, it was kind of a red herring the entire time, pushing you away from suspecting Jane Foster as Thor. However, in the trailer... It looks like that is something that they're just going to make a given. However, the cancer narrative was something that Natalie Portman hinted at being part of the ongoing narrative of the movie years ago. So I think that that's still possibly fair game to suspect. But we have multiple records being broken this week of multiple versions of this very comic book, which features Jane Foster as Thor on the cover for the first time. We saw an increase of copies sold of cover A, last week of 110% as we draw near to the film's debut. Before we get into all the variants, let's talk about that cover A. The CGC 9.8 broke the $300 barrier, selling for $319, outperforming the 90-day average of $295. And get this, comic fam, this 9.8 has been selling like crazy. We have a total of 301 sales of a 9.8 this year alone, and we're only halfway through the year. Last year, there was a total of 9.8 sales of 292. So we've broken the record, and we still have half the year left, and the movie hasn't even dropped. That's right. Movie's not even out yet. We're inching closer and closer, but this is like the peak time of these speculation books. We have Paul Renan store exclusive, a CGC 9.6, which sold for $112 in April, up 36%, selling for $152. The Alex Ross sketch variant, a 9.8 back in April went for $170. It's up 21%, selling for $206. Love that Alex Ross cover. Then we got a JTC store exclusive CGC 9.8. It sold for $250 back in April, and it's up 8% now selling for $270. The R. Adams New York City Comic Con variant 9.0 hit the market back in 2021, selling for $150, up 27% this week, now selling for $191. There was also a CGC 9.8 sale of that same book. It sold for $670 back in April, and it's up 4%, selling for $699. There's also multiple printings of cover A, which we cover on the last trending video this past week. So if you want to get caught up on all the versions of this book, go peep that video. And at the list at number five, Fantastic Four Annual number six debuting in 1968. Jem, we told them this book was prime for speculation outside of the Franklin Richards spec. And now it's come full circle. Yeah, that's right. I was personally speculating that Annihilus would show up in the MCU and be the next big bad. I mean, how else do you follow up Thanos unless you do the Annihilation wave? And then the Franklin Richards spec was always kind of just like a backup. Turns out we get the Franklin Richards nod before the Annihilus came to fruition. It doesn't hurt that we had a huge monster CGC 9.8 sale. It sold for $33,600 last April, and we've been benefiting from the trickle-down ever since. The 6.0 turning in its third highest sale of all time, with two different sales happening this week. One for $600 and one for $625. That is 10% up its 90-day average sale. We call that the Multiverse of Madness effect. A CGC 8.5 almost broke record. The 2021 high was $1,900, and it came just $50 shy, selling for $1,850. That's essentially the same amount. I bet that person who was investing in that book would have been glad to pay that extra $50 or possibly more if they had to. We also have a 9.2 back in 2021 going for $3,500. Well, that's up 6%, selling for $3,720 this week. But hold on, Tom. You're going to want to strap in for the CGC 9.6. It sold for $7,200 back in 2019, and it's up 136%, now selling for $17,000. $17,000, hot damn, comic fam. 
That's a lot of cheddar at the list at number four. Avengers number one from 1963. Kirby goodness. Avengers as a team being formed with Hulk, Iron Man, Wasp, Thor, Ant-Man. And we have three record breakers to discuss. You know, I'm trying to think why is Avengers 1 making the list, but it makes sense. Blue chip keys are on the rise, and this is like one of the most affordable Marvel blue chip keys. Absolutely. And members right now are realizing that if they want a chance at securing some Silver Age Marvel key major moments, now's the time. Before they get scooped up and the prices go too far, we have a 4.0, the highest sale since April just took place, selling for $6,000, and that April height was 6450 A CGC 2.5 broke record, kind of. It sold for $42.99 back in August. It's got a slight increase now, selling for 4320 but wait, there's more because there's a 5.0 that hit the market back in July for 8,400 that broke the 10K marker this week, an increase of 26%. I suspect that the trickle down effect will affect all lower grades now selling for $10,600. And if you enjoy what we do and want to support the show directly, join the June mystery mail call. Give me an excuse to send you a new Fantastic Four number one Kang the Conqueror cover because it's going one per box. Cover art done by Alex Maleev. You guys only have until June 15th to secure this book. Amazing Kang the Conqueror cover. Can't wait to see Kang in the MCU. The evil Kang. Not the happy-go-lucky guy from Loki, but awesome cover, Tom. Congrats. Thank you, thank you. Link in the description or go to ComicTom101.com to support the show and join the community at the list at number three. Fantastic Four Annual number two, debuting in 1964 classic kirby dr doom cover and it's just doom spec we assume he's coming because the fantastic four are coming so his first appearance his classic covers all of that stuff is spiking and you got to look at this cgc 5.0 which sold for 779 dollars that's a three percent increase over its 90 day average we're hearing rumors that we may see hints of Doctor Doom as early as the next Black Panther movie, which is causing that 3.5 to move up. Last selling a week ago for $580, up 2%, now selling for $589. And this is the origin of Doctor Doom. Also, this is where the Battle of Doctor Doom takes place with Rama Tut, who is also Kang the Conqueror. Multiple reasons to spec on this tough and high-grade thick book. Couldn't have said it better myself. Multiple reasons to spec on this book. A CGC 7.0 sold for $1,225 back in August, and it's up 15%, now selling for $1,413. And then we got the 8.5, going for $4,212 just this past February, up 2%, now selling for $4,300. Gem, at the list of number two, a book that we all know is going to explode, but one that's seen lulls probably because of the long, slow burn it's been to introduce the Fantastic Four into the MCU, but with Reed Richards appearing in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, regardless of which multiverse is from, Galactus seems inevitable. And Fantastic Four 49 would be his first full appearance. Now, this book has been on fire ever since the announcement of Fantastic Four, but it is that slow burn that's probably kept it off this list. We have heard rumors that we may see a hint, if not a cameo, of Galactus as early as the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And we have a lot of strong sales that make this book look super promising. Clearly, it's hot. But with Guardians of the Galaxy not taking place until next year, May, I believe, is there still time? I think there is. A CGC 2.0 just tied its 2022 high sale, selling for $739 and still outperforming the 12-month average of 706 we had a 2.5 that sold for $950 this week. Last week, the height was reached at $995, so it almost broke records, but it's still well above the 12-month average of $800. The 4.0 is outperforming its average as well. It sold for $1,300, where it's just averaging $1,125. The 5.0 12-month average was $1,574, and we had two different sales this week that outperformed it, one for $1,600 and another for $1,750. And the same with the 6.5. We had another high sale tie selling for $2,500, and it's 5% over the $2,383 12-month average. 
And now we're at the number one hottest book in the world. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about this list. Do any of these books landing on the list make you interested in specking in other genres, other characters, other key moments? Help your fellow comic fan members in the comment section, and I'll enter you to win this What Not variant of Invincible number one. We have an Omni-Man cover done by Tyler Kirkham. And at the list at number one, Jeb, you must be feeling better by the day. We got Submariner issue number one. The first Namor solo series in the Silver Age debuting in 1968. You know, it's nice to see, but one of these days we'll be proudly reporting on the number one hottest book in the world being Fantastic Four, issue four. But until then, collectors are picking up the next best thing. His first Silver Age appearance is expensive. Well, this one could be expensive too. Let's go over the record breakers. Just last week, we started to see Subby Spec go off the chain because of a leaked blurry image suggesting that Tanek Huerta was going full classic costume. We even saw wings on the ankles. If this leak was legit, regardless, we know Subby is inbound, which is why we're seeing multiple record breakers this week. We have a 0.5 incomplete copy which by the way cgc is going to be scrubbing that verbiage off their labels regardless this 0.5 prior record was set for 200 dollars, is up now selling for 215 the 5.5 had four sales with the highest being 687 dollars, which is 22 percent above the previous year's average I want to remind the community about the mid-May 9.8 sale, nearly matching the February height sale of 19,950. It sold for 19,200. So we know that the trickle-down effect was going to happen. And take a look at this 9.2. It just arrived. The CGC 9.2 had a 12-month average of 2,440, which this new sale blew past, selling for 2,575. That just blew past the average by 6%. Hot damn, comic fam. We appreciate your time today. As always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Join myself, Jem Mint, and the rest of my homies who join me every single Wednesday on the best new place to buy and sell collectibles. What not? Available for both Androids and iPhones. Dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. We bring the giveaways, the keys, the exclusives, exclusive drops, and so much more. We'll see you over there on Wednesday, and have a great week.